Well guys, this week is certainly a busy one in the tech world, but amidst all the crazy news, us Android fans got a really nice surprise with the official Android 16 beta 1 update. Android 16, thankfully, is now available for both developers and early adopters, packed with several new features and changes that we're going to go over real quick. We'll keep things nice and easy, super simple, so sit back and relax, and hey, if you enjoy our Android coverage, which I'd really hope you are, consider subscribing to the channel. You know you want to, so go on ahead join the community, we'd certainly love to have you. Before I dive in, you guys need a quick refresher on the timeline here. This is Android 16 Public Beta 1, the first official update outside of the developer preview. It's the first public-facing Android 16 release that we can actually recommend for people to try out for themselves. Don't get me wrong, there's still probably some quirks and bugs here and there, but it should be stable enough to run on your phone if you want to try it out without too much disruption. If you do decide to install it, you should know the next beta update should be sometime in February with beta 2 that should offer some incremental bug fixes and in March is when we can expect beta 3 and this marks the platform stability milestone. This means the final APIs and app facing behaviors are locked in so developers can start submitting their apps targeting the full Android 16 release. Then around April or May time we can look forward to beta 4 which is the near final build. Here developers will keep working on their apps for Android 16 and sometime after that is the official Android 16 release at least according to Google's public Android 16 webpage. However, we did get an interesting piece of news. There was a comment from a Google employee in the Android Gibbet, which is an Android developer resource regarding internal development deadlines for upcoming betas. They mentioned January 22nd for Android 16 beta 1 and February 19th for beta 2. They also stated beta 3 would be released on March 12th, which is the only confirmed date for an upcoming Android release. Obviously, January 22nd has already passed without this update, so clearly these timelines aren't 100% percent accurate and things can always change but at least keep an eye out on these dates for future releases and definitely come back to this channel for more coverage. Now with that housekeeping out of the way let's get into what's actually new with Android 16 beta 1. Probably one of the biggest additions is a whole new class of notifications called live updates largely intended for progress tracking. It's perfect in theory for ride sharing, food delivery, or navigation apps that currently at least at this time only have static notifications to indicate progress. In practice, this should be great to see the status of anything that requires constant monitoring without having to actually open up the app itself unless you want to. Another big feature introduced in Android 16 is support for the APV or Advanced Professional Video Codec. This is designed for professional, high quality video recording and post production. The APV codec is particularly important for Android because it offers almost lossless video quality or at least as close to raw video quality as possible. Support for high bit rate ranges up to a few gigabits per second for 2K, 4K, and 8K resolution content, support for multi-view video and auxiliary audio, and support for HDR10 slash HDR10 plus content. There are a few more benefits listed in Google's documentation, but I truly think the main focus here is that this could pave the way for high quality video editing apps for Android. Perhaps Adobe or DaVinci Resolve will be able to make their apps fully feature complete, which would be a huge win for productivity on Android. Another big thing in Android 16 here is that there's a new developer option that's going to make it easier for third-party apps to access night mode. The end result is this will hopefully get better experiences shooting in low-light photos directly in third-party apps as opposed to having to use the first-party Pixel camera app itself. Then there are a lot of quote-unquote behavior changes that are really geared towards developers. I won't dig into this too deep because it's super technical language that's not really meant for the average user, but I'll put a link in the description for those that want to dig in and take a look. Finally, it is worth noting, we are on the January 2025 security patch, so if you did want to update, you do have the latest security protocols, which is just good peace of mind. So that's everything you need to know in regards to what's going on under the hood, but as usual, here at 9to5Google, we dug deep into the operating itself to see what's new, and I'll show you what we found real quick. One of the first things we noticed with Android 16 is how much faster reboot times are. From our short time on the beta, I'd say it's about 15 seconds faster, and hey, more Android optimizations are always good, so I'm happy to take it. You'll also see a cool new glow animation while the home screen loads after a fresh reboot, which is some nice attention to detail if I do say so myself. The Easter egg has been updated as well, featuring the new Android 16 logo and a slick light speed like animation when you enter the mini game. We're not sure if there are any functional changes to the Easter egg itself yet, but we'll definitely keep you posted. In the meantime, we have spotted an updated system UI icon for Android 16. It's now a tiny 
little baklava to match the internal code name. If you're still rocking the three button navigation instead of swipe gestures, you'll be happy to know you can now take advantage of the predictive back gestures. To do this, just long press the back button to see a quick animation to the page you're about to go back to. Alternatively, you can swipe off that button to disable the gesture if you triggered it by accident, let's say. And speaking of predictive back gestures, they now work in the wallpaper and style section of the settings app as well. We also found a new contact storage page in the settings, which lets you choose where contacts are saved, whether that be on device or in the cloud to a specific Google account. This is basically a settings toggle for the feature, which was already in the Google contacts app, just to be clear here. Now, this next one's not really a new feature, but rather a prominent bug we wanted to put on your radar. The notification shade seems to have grayed out the clock, date, and build number. So don't freak out if it's happening to you as it should hopefully be fixed soon. Closing out the changes that we spotted here, as usual, interface animations seem smoother and a bit faster compared to previous versions of Android. At least that's our impression so far. I will say though, something I'm surprised we did not see in this build is the quick settings redesign that was rumored to be coming in Android 16. This was news that was floating around quite a bit a while back, and personally, I felt the community wasn't a huge fan of it, so I'm unsure if it's still coming or not, but like I said, we'll keep you posted if anything changes. As a whole, my friend, that's everything new we spotted in Android 16 Beta 1. For what we see so far, I'd say we can recommend this build for anyone that actually wants to try the update ahead of launch. The developer preview is is really not worth flashing or sideloading on your phone, but you can go to the Android beta site and sign up right now to get an updated OTA, or you can flash the current Android 16 build manually using a link in the description. If you're on the Pixel 6 and newer, you are eligible to get that update, so try it out if you're interested. Either way, leave a comment and let me know how you think Android 16 is coming along so far. There are still a few more features that need to be implemented, I'm sure, but from what we know now, leave a comment and share your thoughts. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, a huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, we love you guys and greatly appreciate your support as we do our best to make the highest quality Android content on the platform. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.